Welcome to this tutorial on functional sequences. In this tutorial we're going to talk about pointwise and uniform convergence of sequences of functions and illustrate these ideas using some diagrams and examples. Previously we've talked about sequences of numbers and we know that if a sequence of numbers is convergent it converges to a number which we call the limit of the sequence. And these ideas can be extended to sequences of functions so if a sequence of functions is convergent, it converges to a limit function. But we have to be careful to define exactly what we mean by convergence, because when it comes to functional sequences, there are different types of convergence to consider. So just to recap, suppose we have a sequence of numbers which is convergent. In this diagram, our sequence is defined by a n equals a half to the power n for all natural numbers n. So a1 equals a half, a2 equals a quarter, and so on. And the sequence converges to a limit of zero. And what that means using formal language is that for any positive number epsilon, no matter how small, you can find a point in the sequence where all of the terms following on from that point will be within a distance of epsilon from the limit of the sequence, which in this case is zero. So after that comprehensive review of sequences of numbers, it's time to move on to sequences of functions. So let's just start by clarifying exactly what we mean by a functional sequence. So a functional sequence is an infinite list of functions which we call f1, f2 and so on. And each element of our sequence is a function rather than a number. So that means it has a certain argument, in other words the input to the function, which might be referred to as x, for example. So just as an example, suppose f1 of x equals x, f2 of x equals x over 2, and so on, where we allow x to be any real number. Then the general rule for our functional sequence is fn of x equals x over n for all natural numbers n and real numbers x. Suppose we draw a diagram of our functional sequence f1 of x is equal to x, which is a straight line. f2 of x is equal to x over 2, which is also a straight line, but not as steep. And if we keep going, we see that our functions f3 of x, f4 of x, and so on, can be drawn as straight lines, which become less and less steep. And if we jump forward a bit, this line is f50 of x, and at this point, the line is almost horizontal. So if we consider the limiting behaviour as n gets larger and larger, as the sequence goes on and on, these functions are going to get closer to matching the zero function, which is a constant function which always takes the value of zero for any value of x. So we say that the constant function fx equals zero, notice that we've removed the n subscript here, is the limit function of the sequence. Suppose we look at a fixed value of x, for example x equals 1, and we look at the values of the functions in the sequence at this point. We have f1 of 1 equals 1, f2 of 1 equals a half, etc. And you can see that these values converge to 0, because for each natural number n, fn of 1 equals 1 over n. And if we choose a different value of x, for example let's take x equals 2, Again, we find that the function values at this point also converge to zero. It's just that they converge to zero at a different speed, because this time fn of x is equal to 2 over n instead of 1 over n. So the important point is that if we choose any fixed value of x, the points fn of x converge to zero, which is also the value of the limit function at whichever point we're looking at because we have a constant limit function, fx equals zero for all x. So to summarise what we found from our diagram, suppose we have a fixed value of x, then it's clear that x over n tends to zero as n tends to infinity. We say that the functional sequence x over n converges pointwise to the limit function fx equals zero. So it's called pointwise convergence, because it describes what happens at fixed points, in other words, fixed values of x. And don't forget that the limit is a function and not a number. So when we say x over n converges to zero, we're talking about the constant function 
fx equals zero, not the number zero. Now let's go back to our diagram. Suppose we have a small number epsilon. Imagine it as being a fixed small number. And let's draw this on our diagram so that epsilon represents a certain distance from our limit function f of x equals zero. Now, bearing in mind that the functions in our sequence fn of x get closer and closer to our limit function as the sequence goes on and on, we can ask ourselves the question, how large does n need to be? In other words, how far do we need to go in our sequence in order for the difference between fn of x and f of x to be smaller than epsilon? Well, the answer to this question actually depends on what value of x we're looking at. For example, at this value of x, we find that the third function in our sequence, f3 of x, is actually within a distance of epsilon of f of x at this point. On the other hand, if we look at a different value of x over here, for example, this time you can see that we need to go as far as the fourth function in our sequence, f4 of x, in order for our function to be within a distance of epsilon from the limit function fx equals zero. And because the value of n required for this inequality to hold actually depends on x, we say that although our functional sequence is pointwise convergent, it is not uniformly convergent. So here are a couple of definitions. Suppose that we have a sequence of functions fn defined on a certain domain d, which is a subset of the real numbers. We say that the functional sequence fn is pointwise convergent to a limit function f defined on the same domain if for all epsilon greater than zero and for all values of x in the domain we can find some value big n such that for all little n greater than big n this inequality holds. In other words the distance between fn of x and f of x is smaller than epsilon. And an important thing to note here is that this value of n can depend on both epsilon and x, so we can choose different values of big N for different values of x. Now keep your eye on this part of the definition here, and we're going to move on to the definition of uniform convergence. And you can see that the definition of uniform convergence is actually the same as the definition of pointwise convergence, except that two of our quantifiers have swapped around so they're now in a different order. And what that means is that in the case of uniform convergence, big N is still allowed to depend on epsilon, but it cannot depend on x. So in other words, the same value of big N has to work for all values of x. So what this means is that if a functional sequence is uniformly convergent, it automatically has to be pointwise convergent as well, with the same limit function. But on the other hand, if we know a functional sequence is pointwise convergent, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be uniformly convergent as well, because we might not be able to find a value of big N that works for all the values of X. Now let's consider another functional sequence, this time fn of X equals X plus one over N for all real numbers X and natural numbers N. And the questions we want to ask about this sequence are, is it pointwise convergent? If it is, what's the limit function? And is the sequence uniformly convergent? And this time, if we plot the first few functions in the sequence, f1 of x equals x plus 1, f2 of x equals x plus a half, etc., we can see that as n gets larger and larger, our functions approach a limit function, f of x equals x. And since this is true for any value of x, we say that the sequence converges pointwise to fx equals x. Now let's do what we did in the previous example and consider a small value of epsilon which represents a certain distance from our limit function. And in this example, it turns out that no matter what value of x you consider, so whether you're looking at this point here, or this point down here, or this point up here, it's actually going to make no difference to the value of n that you need in other words, the point in the sequence that you need to go up to in order for fn of x to be within a distance of epsilon from the limit function f of x. So in other words, if we ask ourselves the question, how large does n need to be for this inequality to hold? The answer is always going to be the same for all the values of x.
And this means that not only does our sequence converge pointwise to the limit function f of x equals x, it also converges uniformly to f of x equals x. If we're talking informally, we can say that in the case of uniform convergence, the speed of the convergence does not depend on x, whereas in the case of pointwise convergence, the speed of the convergence does depend on x. So now we're going to talk about how to prove a functional sequence is pointwise and uniformly convergent, and we'll start by looking at how to do this directly using the definitions that we saw a few moments ago. Let's try to prove that the sequence x plus 1 over n converges pointwise and uniformly to f of x equals x by using the definitions. Just to recap, we have to show that it's possible to find a natural number big N such that fn of x is within a distance of epsilon from f of x whenever little n is bigger than big N. And in the case of pointwise convergence, big N can depend on both epsilon and x, but in the case of uniform convergence, big N can depend only on epsilon. Well, the modulus of fn of x minus f of x, if you work it out, is equal to 1 over n. So if we choose big N to be any natural number larger than 1 over epsilon, then this inequality will hold whenever little n is larger than big N. And since big N depends only on epsilon, that's enough to satisfy the definitions of pointwise and uniform convergence at the same time. So the proof is complete.